तब कथामृत तप्त जीवन कविड़ीत कलशापम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती ये भुरीदा जना लेट अस रिज्यूम अवर डिस्कशन ऑन श्री राम कृष्ण स्पिरिचुअल डिस्कोर्सेस एमंग दि ब्राह्मो डिवोटीज ऑन संडे 19th of October 1884 in a congregation festival of the Brahmo devotees in the garden house of Beni Madhav Pal in the Sithi area of North Kolkata not too far from Dakshineshwar let us recapitulate the salient points discussed in our last interaction which were two weeks ago because last week i was not here and this appears in the first part of the original bengali version sri sri ramakrishna kathamrita 1 12 2 12 chapter of the first part of the five part bengali version in the two part hindi translation sri ramakrishna bachana amrit in the second volume chapter 99 and sub section 2 and chapter 31 of the chronologically presented english translation the gospel of sri ram krishna we have discussed that sri ram krishna has categorized the spiritual aspirants into four groups now <clears throat> all the human beings are broadly classified into two groups one those who are engrossed in the worldly pleasures they think this life is meant for enjoyment only <clears throat> so these are the broad classifications in the bhagavad gita there is a chapter differentiating these two varieties daiva sura sampad vibhaga yoga one is daivas and another is asuras so we have two propensities <clears throat> दैव संपत आसुरी संपत वी आर इन द मिडल हैविंग बोथ वी हैव सम डिवाइन प्रोपेंसिटीज वी हैव सम डेमोनियाकल प्रोपेंसिटीज दैव शक्ति एंड आसुर शक्ति आसुरी शक्ति बोथ आर प्रेजेंट इन अस एंड दे आर कॉन्स्टेंटली फाइटिंग विथ इच अदर the life is that's why called a life of struggle sangram constant fight the devas are trying to overcome the asuras asuri shakti propensities and the vice versa so those who are completely under the dominance of asuri shakti the devi shakti is completely under the dominance they are called the आसुरी संपद संपन्न मनुष्य दे आर डेमोनियाकल दे आर क्वालिफिकेशंस दे आर सिम्टम्स आर ऑल मेंशन इन द भगवद गीता दे आर गोल ऑफ लाइफ इज टू ईट ड्रिंक एंड बी इन मेरी दे डू नॉट बिलीव इन एनीथिंग एल्स दोज हु आर विथ दैवी संपद सम पोर्शन इज नॉट टोटली ब्लैंक they sometimes feel that there is something else in this world so those who are under that completely dominance <coughs> of the asuri sampad they are called baddha jeev they are bound as bhagwan sri krishna says in the bhagavad gita the baddha jeev means that they i put them again and again in this cycle of birth and death they are born as bonded slaves slaves under their propensities of passions 
काम क्रोध लोह मोह मद मत सर्ज दी आसुरी शक्ति दे आर कम्प्लीटली अंडर द डोमिनेंस ऑफ दीज प्रोपेंसिटीज एंड सो दे दे आर बॉर्न टू डाई एंड दे डाई टू बी बॉर्न अगेन दैट्स वाई दे आर कॉल बाउंड बद्ध देर बद्ध इन वाट इन दिस चक्रा इन दिस साइकिल ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ दे कै नॉट कम आउट ना दे वॉन्ट टू कम आउट बट देर इज एनदर वेराइटी बद्ध जी those who are mumuk shoes those who want to come out of the cycle they are tired of this repeated birth and death they feel that <coughs> the pleasures offered by the world are not the be all and end all of life <coughs> they become frustrated because this pleasures available in this world does not give complete satisfaction tripti nahi milta hai contentment is not there is an unending journey so they become totally frustrated of this propensities of this world they want to have something else something more something beyond so there the spirituality begins where the worldly aspirations end there the divine aspirations begin they want something more something else they want to come out of this repeated cycle of birth and death with the expectation of something permanent eternal infinite unending boundless joy this worldly <coughs> pleasures have three difficulties one it is limited is not unlimited because the instruments with which the worldly pleasures are enjoyed those instruments are limited so limited instrument you cannot have unlimited pleasures what are these instruments our indriyas our organs sense organs we have got 11 indriyas 10 external organs one internal organ and out of the 10 external organs you have got five organs of action five organs of knowledge चक्षु कर्ण नासी का जीव हुआ त्वक आदि इंटरनल ऑर्गन इज माइंड विद दिस इलेवन लिमिटेड इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स वी कैन नॉट हैव अनलिमिटेड जॉय देर इज वन डिफिकल्टी ऑफ वर्ल्ड प्लेशर्स सेकेंड इट इज नॉट पार्मानेंट इट्स ट्रांजिटरी ओनली फॉर ए लिमिटेड टाइम इट स्टार्ट एंड एंड्स सो वेन इट कम्स इट गिवस अस प्लेजर when it goes it gives us pain so the third difficulty is not only it is transient it is inevitably inevitably connected with misery is not unalloyed joy and <clears throat> not only unalloyed joy in the beginning it appears as nectar and at the end it gives us the grief of a poison pariname bishamiva and the beginning amrito upamam is like a, it's not nectar it looks like nectar so it has the appearance of nectar and in reality it is poison is very dangerous is rajas su worldly pleasures so the three difficulties with worldly pleasures it is limited it is temporary and is mixed with grief necessarily mixed with grief there cannot be any worldly enjoyment which does not end up in grief this either we learn from experience or from knowledge of others 
of the scriptures of saints and seers. Necessarily, yohi sangsparshadya bhoga, whatever may be the bhoga, dukha jona evate, it must end in grief. Adhyanta bantha kontya, nati shuramate buddha, so wise people never get engaged. Because they know, they have done enough. So they have a lot of experience in this life or previous life, they become alert. So in this scenario, <coughs> those who are bound, some of them, a very few of them, want to get out. They are called the sadhakas, mumukshus. Now the sadhakas means those who are spiritual at aspirants, those who have started to lead a life of difference. There's a difference. So with millions and millions of people, hardly one or two aspire to have spiritual journey. Manushyanam sahasri shukas chid jatati siddhai. Very rarely, those who aspire to lead a spiritual life, they are extremely fortunate and rare being. In Bhagavad Gita says, and we see also around, millions of people are roaming around like microbes. <coughs> so, they are classed as bonded slaves, Baddhaji. And the other is Mumukshu. Now, all these Mumukshus have been classified here in this chapter. Those who are Daiva Sampad, Yukta, those who have the divine propensities to come out of their demoniacal nature, they are of four varieties. That's what has been said here. So, four varieties are Pravartak, Sadhaka, Siddha, Siddha, Siddha. These are the four varieties. Chaar prakar ke bhakt hote hai. Those who are trying to come out, they are called bhaktas, devotees. Pravartak, Sadhak, Siddha, Siddha ka Siddha. Now we'll explain what are these. According to a certain school of thought, there are four classes of devotees. The Prabhartaka, the Sadhaka, the Siddha and the Siddha of the Siddhas. Now, he explains, what is this Prabhartha? That is the beginner, novice, those who have just started their spiritual life. First stage. In the kindergarten, primary school, they have started, began their journey. So what are their symptoms? How do they behave? How do they look like? <coughs> For them, the religion is a matter of ritual. For them, <coughs> they undergo certain disciplines, certain rigor, certain drill. That's what they think. They have certain marks, certain type of dress, certain color of dress. They do some worship, japam, meditation, so some routine, some drill they have to do, rituals. And they restrict their spiritual activities in that and they feel, they feel satisfied that yes, I have done enough of spiritual practice, I have repeated so many thousands of God's name, I sat for puja for so many hours. I offered so many flowers, I have traveled so many tirthas, I have made so much of donation. So all quantified, quantified religion, these are the meant for the beginners. So this is, there is no <coughs> touch of the inner longing. They think it is a matter of some formality. They are called the 
वैधि भक्ति विधि जैसे इंजंक्शंस एंड प्रोहिबिशंस विधि निषेध इन ऑल स्क्रिप्चरल बुक्स फॉर द बिगिनर्स देर आर सर्टेन डूज एंड डोंट्स यू हैव टू डू दीज थिंग्स यू हैव टू सिंग राम नाम ऑन द एकादशी देन श्याम नाम ऑन पूर्णिमा डेज एंड फास्ट ऑन सर्टन डेज विजिल ऑन शिवरात्रि दीज आर ऑल रिचुअल्स दे प्रैक्टिस एंड दे फील सेटिस्फाइड ये इज डन आई हैव डन एना फॉर स्पिरिचुअलिटी दैट इज मैन फॉर द बिगिनर्स अनलेस दे ट्रांसेंड दिस स्टेज दे रिमेन इन द प्राइमरी क्लास फॉर एवर दैट इज नॉट द गोल द गोल इज टू बिकम एजुकेटेड नॉट टू रिमेन इन स्कूल फॉर एवर सो द नेक्स्ट प्रमोशन कम्स वेन दे बिकम साधका साधका मीन्स दोज हु आर लिटिल मैच्योर ऑफ द स्पिरिचुअल एस्पायरेंट्स दे बिलोंग टू दे दे आर ऑल्सो भक्तज द प्रवर्तक आर ऑल्सो भक्तज बट दे स्टिक टू वैधि भक्ति रिचुअलिस्टिक वर्शिप इलाबरेट दुर्गा पूजा लक्ष्मी पूजा हवन अर्पण all the things they are doing that the vidhi some injunctions some routine routine it may it may not have any touch of the heart and mostly it becomes to show to others look how elaborate i am doing the puja how much donation i am making i give an advertisement i want to see my name printed in the annual report so these are is a good word pious work and is for the beginners when it becomes sadhaka then it becomes a sincere spiritual aspirant first is a formal spiritual aspirant sincere spiritual aspirant doesn't care for vaidhi bhakti they they enter into raganuka bhakti raga bhakti bhakti is twice twofold in the Chaitanya Charitamrita it has been said ei to sadhan bhakti dui to prakar ag bhakti raga bhakti vaidhi bhakti ar one raga bhakti one vaidhi raga bhakti there is attachment of love they start loving god and they have a longing to see god that longing part is there he doesn't care for rituals rather he wants to <coughs> hide his spiritual longing from others religion is not a matter to be advertised shown so they sincerely call on god when they sincerely call on god then they concentrate their mind to the feet of their goal and those who become successful they are called siddhas they have attained perfection siddha means perfect successful they have attained their goal so now sri ramakrishna differentiates between the pravartaka and sadhaka that those who are under ritualistic worship they are the pravartaka those who are the worship of the heart genuine worship they are raga bhakti means raga means anurag priti love those who worship god with love love appears then it becomes the job of sadhaka now how the sadhaka becomes siddha the sadhaka is the aspirant is loving god in order to be close with him when he is able to see god then it becomes siddha successful the success is characterized that we must remember what are we after what is the measure of success measure of success is to see god measure of success is not to do japam 
दैट इज नॉट द गोल और इसी तीर्थ चार धाम केदारनाथ बद्रीनाथ अमरनाथ पशुपतिनाथ मेकिंग डोनेशंस डूइंग दीज आर ऑल प्रीडिमिनेज गोल इज टू सी गॉड दैट्स वाई श्री रामकृष्ण से इज ईश्वर दर्शन ही मनुष्य जीवन का उद्देश्य है द गोल ऑफ लाइफ इज टू सी गॉड वेन यू आर एबल टू सी गॉड देन बिकम सिद्ध सक्सेसफुल परफेक्ट दैट इज कॉल्ड दैट यू हैव बिकम ए ग्रेजुएट वेन यू आर स्टार्टिंग इन प्रिलिमिनरी देन स्कूल इंटर स्कूल कॉलेज एंड बिकम्स ग्रेजुएट सो दैट यू बिकम सिद्ध यू गर ए डिग्री you have been able to see god and then he entered into post graduate and he become a phd doctor of philosophy that means he have become siddhya siddha siddhya se siddhya q and what is the clarification qualification he not only sees god he talks with him he hears his voice he touches him he makes god his very own as we interact with each other he not only sees directly or in a vision is not a vision for a temporary period he lives with god god is with him so that is the ultimate goal that is called education sri ram krishna says the four varieties we gives an example that those who are trying to have some knowledge of milk those who are trying to have some knowledge of milk now first of all they collect some data they collect some data about milk so they are the pravartakas plain minerals those who have been able to collect the data and form a strong intellectual understanding about what milk is is no more collection of data they know what milk is they know milk is color is this they are confirmed though they do don't have a direct knowledge they have confirmed the milk is of this color its specific type it is this it is a liquid it has this sort of qualities nourishment what are the this uh, its uh, values all has been confirmed in their mind they have concentrated on this knowledge so they are gyanis they are sadhakas when they are able to see milk in reality is not only knowledge they have seen how milk is they have seen how milk is milked they become siddha and when they drink milk and, and, and derive nourishment of the milk then their knowledge of milk is complete they become vigyani so gyani is are shastrartha gyanam gyanam tat sa anubhava karanam vigyanam realization so god is not only a matter of vision is a matter of realization being and becoming that is religion religion is realization religion is not a bunch of theories or some rituals or not even belief and dogmas doctrines or opinion it is a matter of living is matter of realization so those who are sadhakas they are to be very careful so all of us are either pravartakas or sadhakas there there are rare ones who become siddha and siddhi siddha now those who are pravartakas they have to be careful not to end up religion with a bunch of rituals they have to rise above the rituals and try to have a loving relation with god but those who are sadhakas they can become successful only if they orient their life and goal to one point 
in the bhagavad gita 15th chapter the verse 11 bhagavan says yanat yatanto yoginaschainam pashyantatman nivastitam yatanta pokritatmano nainam pashyanta chetasah so yatanta means those who are trying yatanti yatnam karoti those who are aspirants those who are aspiring trying practicing to realize god there are two varieties those who are yogis they are able to become successful they become siddhas and the rest becomes unsuccessful and what is the criteria why bhagavan gives a reason Yadat those who are aspiring, they become yogi, they become successful, means they are one-pointed. They do not want anything else. So the sadhakas one-pointed, goal-oriented. Their job is to realize God, their job is to see God. They should not, they cannot rest assured, rest complacent without the achievement of the goal goal orientation stop not till the goal is reached wo kar ke rukte hain rukte nahi chalte rehte hain jab tak uska laksh prapti nahi hogi pashyanti they say sri krishna guarantees pashyanti atmani vastitam they see god where do they see God? We are saying that we have to see God. God is within us. That we all take for granted. God is sitting in every one of us, but in an invisible form. We don't see, only hear. And some of us believe also. Most of us do not believe. This is a bogus. How God can be within me? I am a poor person. So when the sadhaka, he believes that God is within me. That is the, this, this criterion of sadhaka. Sadhaka believes that God is. Sadhaka has, those are spiritual aspirants, by dint of your practice, they'll be called sadhaka if they develop four convictions. They have four convictions. First, God exists, God is. God is not a bogus principle, He is existing first. Ishwar hai, Paramatma hai. Secondly, God is even now, abhi bhi hai. Many people think, oh, Bhagavan to tha, abhi nahi hai. Charot kaha itna. चल रहा है गड़बड़ चल रहा है भगवान अगर रहते सब सुधार देते शायद भगवान अभी छुट्टी ले लिया यहाँ पर उपस्थित नहीं है साधा का नोज नॉट ओनली गॉड इज प्रेजेंट गॉड इज प्रेजेंट नाउ आल्सो थर्डली गॉड इज हियर इज नॉट दैट गॉड इज गॉन अवे फ्रॉम दिस प्लेस इज प्रेजेंट हियर एंड फोर्थली गॉड इज प्रेजेंट इन मी and I am his very own. God is not separate from me. He is within me. And I am his very own. He is my very own. That proximity, nearness, karivi ban jata hai, sadak. Though he has not been able to see. So then he becomes a yogi one-pointed. But the others, those who are aspiring, those who are calling on God, they are doing a lot of rituals, japam, meditation, why they are not able to do? For two reasons. Akrita Atmanaha Achita Saha They are Aviveki. Achita Saha Matlab Aviveki. They do not apply their tool of discrimination. And they are overpowered with their hankering for worldly pleasures. Those two, two difficulties, two leakages. Those who are spiritual aspirants, 
they are acquiring lot of merit but the merit does not come to their help because there are two leakages the leakages all the merit gets discharged one is aviveki we have a powerful tool within us that is vivek discrimination discrimination means the power of the mind to differentiate from the real and the unreal truth and untruth satya nrita mithunikritam this there is a mixture of truth and untruth the god god has given us this tool vivek by which we can differentiate but mostly we do not use this tool that is the tragedy all of us have vivek lekin vivek ko hum istemal nahi karte we do not use it we keep it unused vivek is like a sword we put it on the sheath kosh yukt tarwari it should be kosh mukt we must take out the sword from the sheath and use it as a tool so as soon as you use it for each and every experience of life we have to ask one question is it real or unreal is it permanent or is it transient how long is it going to stay with us it's one question there is vivek discriminate discrimination the all experience we should not take without verification jaanch karna chahiye investigate karna chahiye investigation karne ka kshamta hamara bhitar hai uski istemal karo ek baat puchho ye kitna din rehne wala hai how long will it stay this you will get an uniform answer is not going to stay forever ye to chhod ke chale jayenge kuch din tak hai barabar ke liye kuch nahi hai now if it is not permanent then it is asatya asat our concern should be with sat that which stays so those who are aviveki they cloud their mind they do not use their discrimination they they just dump their buddhi under blanket and they head on going for wrong decisions A wrong decision means they get engaged into the worldly pleasures which will ultimately put him to permanent grief pariname bishami so they become lost they cannot become successful there is another difficulty that when a person becomes sadhaka then he has the capacity to concentrate his mind because mind is focused towards god focused towards the goal when the mind is trained to focus towards a goal then the mind develops some power shakti is a scientific process when you take a lens and you focus the sun rays on a particular point you do not have to believe in god is a scientific truth the sun rays when it gets focused it generates heat if you hold it for certain time the heat will be so much that it will burn the place you put a piece of cotton and focus the sun rays stay for some time you'll see the cotton is burning in fact this is how the fire is created in our holy sacrifices havan mein aise karke aag laga roshni se banta hai is pure it is not struck by match sticks in the traditional havans so how did it generate by concentration by focusing similarly our mind has tremendous power it's all faded away when we learn to concentrate the mind focus the mind on a particular point then the hidden power gets manifested so that power the hidden power of the mind because manifested and makes us powerful that's why so vivekananda says the secret of success in life is concentration of mind 
with this concentrated mind concentrated mind wherever you focus the mind you'll be successful now there's a danger involved because when the mind becomes extremely powerful then we know the common proverb power corrupts absolute power corrupts absolutely we have to remember this is not the goal of life the goal orientation is necessary the during the process of achieving the goal when you try to concentrate on the goal mind generates some power and takes us away of the goal that is a risk involved there is a danger involved there is the warning sri ram krishna is giving here we have to be very careful it's not enough to cross over this ritualistic phase and getting into the concentrated mind we have to use this concentrated mind to focus on god and not on the world if you focus the mind on the world then instead of making the nuclear medicines you will end up into nuclear weapons that is necessary where are you going to focus the mind mind has developed very powerful so the common pitfall of spiritual life is this power becomes perverted into occult powers which is called siddhi we are after siddhi to become perfect but these siddhis are called occult powers miracles which takes us away from the goal which makes us popular gives us recognition but then we are swayed away from the ultimate goal of life and we are lost so here sri ram krishna says that this siddhi the occult powers are to be shunned very carefully now in the patanjali yoga sutra they have said these are called vibhutis these are called vibhutis these are their powers they are automatically acquired those who are concentrating on the mind that concentrated mind when it focuses to one or the other it gives us generate these powers now <clears throat> powers are classified into eight heads is called ashta siddhi for theoretical purpose academic purpose we must know what are these eight four powers which sometimes come on the way so when the yogi when this sadhaka he gets these powers he become surprised wonder struck where are these powers coming from his own and he wants to experiment on these powers and that's how he goes away now we know in the life of sri ramakrishna that there are two persons chandra and girija they are known to sri ram krishna now these two persons were great spiritual aspirants and they developed these occult powers and when they came to sri ram krishna they exhibited these occult powers but sri ram krishna advised them to get rid of these occult powers and travel to their original goal of life to see god so what are these eight four powers is said in the scriptures anima mahima chaiva garima lakhima tatha prati prakamyam ishitam vashistam cha ashta siddhah anima lagima mahima garima prapti prakamyam ishitam vashitam these are the eight four powers you see we we call them yogi that those who have got powers but bhagwan in his 11th 
verse of the 15th chapter says yogis are those who are oriented towards god and god alone his powers are great obstacles here sri ramakrishna says sri krishna told tells to arjuna brother wherever you see the manifestation of these occult powers no for certain i am not there so you have to make a differentiation whether we want to exercise these powers and gain name and fame or do you want god we cannot have both we cannot have night and day together that is the tragedy of life we want this also we want that also so they say that this is akritatmana this is achita saha we are not achieving our vivek we cannot have sat and asat simultaneously so this has to be properly understood these powers take us away from our real attention take us away from god this anima means the capacity the strength to squeeze someone to a minutesimal dimension anima this we know in the hanuman chalisa we say asra siddhi ke nidhi ko udasa asra siddhi nav nidhi ko udasa so this hanuman ji mahavir ji had this eight fold powers has this navam nidhi there's a different thing this ashta siddhi he has the capacity to reduce himself to a small form we know in the ashoka vatika he appeared in a very small form he can reduce his form and he can elam elaborate his form also anima mahima he can expand his form he can reduce his form similarly lagima garima means he can make himself light and also he can make himself heavy so light they can travel in air we we here yogis are traveling in air this is nothing absurd by concentration of mind this is told in patanjali yoga sutras that one person attains these occult powers is a natural outcome of the concentration of mind when you concentrate the sun rays focus on a piece of cotton and you generate fire is not a miracle is is a scientific process of of at your focusing the heat similarly when you focus the mental energy to a particular point these are but natural outcomes they are nothing to do with any miracle this natural outcomes so mahima is making him very large anima means making is small and the lagima means making one slight garima is making one very heavy we have read in the life of sri ramakrishna small boy gadadhar lying on ground on the country leaf he became so heavy the leaf got broken huge sound this this happened in the simad bhagavata also we hear the life of sri krishna similarly he became so heavy that yashoda could not lift him up so these are the manifestations of the power they are natural with the incarnations of god then praptihi praptihi means that he can travel wherever he wants now we see in the life of sri ram krishna he was living in dakshineshwar vijay krishna goswami sohin dhaka he can make him say present he was staying in dakshineshwar he was appearing in simla street in the room of narendra nath and prakamyam means he can achieve whatever he likes kamana charitartha kar sakte this is the danger when a person gets the power to get whatever he wants if his mind is not pure then he desires something which is not to be desired then he falls the power is difficult to achieve but very easy to lose 
So there you need a very strong, pure life. That's why it is risky. It's very dangerous. Sri Ramakrishna forbade, never get in for power, never aspire for this. And then, Ishitam means that he can command, lead. He, he can command, Isha, Prabhu. Bhashitam means he can make others subordinate. So these are the different powers come by the focus of the mind. Sri Ramakrishna says these are the obstacles which stand in the way for a sadhaka to become siddha. So when he becomes siddha, he sees God and then afterwards he travels further and wants to have a loving relation with God. Not only he sees him, he touches him, he hears him, he makes him very own, he becomes siddhi, siddha. That is the ultimate goal of life. Sri Ramakrishna is saying that we have to orient our goal in such a way that we do not get bogged down at any intermediate stage. That is very important. We must be always sincere, aspirant. And then he says, it is not difficult to see God, provided one takes care of all these processes in their mind. He says, believe me, God can be seen, God can be lived with, provided one aspires to be. He says, who wants to see God? We want so many things. Because we are not using our power of discrimination. We must have the strong power of discrim discrimination. Vivek, what are we after? Why are we after? What do you want? What you have got? This process of discrimination continuously we pray to God and by His grace we can definitely see Him. We will continue further in our next Sunday class. Niranjanam nityam anantarupam Bhaktan Ukampadrita Vigraham Bhai Ishavataram Parameshamidyam Tamram Krishnam Shirasanamama Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Shri Ram Krishna Rapanamastu This announcement on, we are in the end of May now. On 1st of June, we have Ram Nam Sankirtan on Wednesday. And Friday evening, as usual, there will be a Bhagavad Gita discourse in Hindi. In the evening after Aarti. Aarti is at 7.20 now. So from 8 to 8.45, there will be evening discourse on Hindi. We are reading 15th chapter now, verse 12. There will be on Friday evening. On Saturday we have Palaharini Kali Puja. In the evening after the Aarti, Kali Puja will start and end by about 10 o'clock with distribution of Prasad. Palaharini Kali Puja is the special Kali Puja where the, we celebrate the anniversary of Sri Ramakrishna's performing the Shodashi Puja on this particular evening that worshipping Holy Mother Sri Sharda Devi on this particular day. So there will be discourse on the significance of Falaharini Kali Puja and also Kali Kirtan followed by Prasad Vitaran. And on next Sunday evening we will have the Devi Nam Sankirtan after evening Aarti. We close now with the chanting of the Lord. Please join with me. Ek saath. Hamra saath Bhagavan ka naam kare. Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna 
Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om Ram Krishna Hari Om तो उसका ख्याल तो रखना पड़ेगा ना? दीदी, ये आपका और